Okay, great, thank you. As my 3D biopsy disclosure. So uh, just to review a little bit about the hormonal axis, uh, the anterior pituitary hypothalamic axis produces the luteinizing hormone, which stimulates the interstitial cells to produce testosterone. And as we're all aware of that feedback mechanism uh, with LH and testosterone, as opposed to FSH, which simulates their Sertoli cells to produce sperm, and that feedback mechanism is with inhibin. So what are the risk factors for low testosterone? And these, these factors are fairly well known, type 2 diabetes, uh, weight loss, osteoporosis, chronic obstructive lung disease, uh, glucocorticoids, ketoconazole, opioids. But for us as urologists, what we, we're, we, what we really need to pay attention to is obesity and the use of LHRH agonists or antagonists. Uh, and We'll hear some, we're here going to hear talks about uh, how perhaps intermittent hormonal therapy or cessation of hormonal therapy and how that affects uh, the testosterone production. But I'm going to focus right now, as I did yesterday with PSA, on lifestyle changes and how they affect testosterone and what we as urologists can do when taking care of men to help us identify those patients who are at risk for a low testosterone. Uh, contraindications have, to testosterone replacement therapy have sort of the dogma for us has been prostate cancer. And Dr. Morgan Teller is going to tell us that maybe this is not such a strong contraindication. And I think we all have experience in our practices in taking care of prostate cancer patients, uh, having placed a patient on uh, LHRH agonist, and let's say we did it for a year, and now that patient's five years out from brachytherapy, and his PSA is zero, and he was only lower intermediate risk to begin with, and he's coming in with uh, complaints of low T. Should we use testosterone on those patients, even though there's an absolute quote unquote contraindication? And my feeling is yes, but let's hear what some of the data is and what the experts say on that issue. So in terms of hypogonadism, defined as a syndrome associated with low T and sexual symptoms of diminished libido, erectile dysfunction, difficulty achieving orgasm, diminished intensity of experience of orgasm, and diminished sexual penile sensation. And many of us see patients in the office coming in with sexual complaints and you tend to dichotomize the patient's wall. Should I just give that patient... Uh, PDE5 inhibitor, or should I check his testosterone, and maybe it's low T, and will that, replacing the testosterone, help his sexual function, and which is a safer way to go? Just try a Viagra or a Cialis or whatever drug, or do I do the whole workup and check the testosterone? So uh, the purpose of this talk is perhaps to give you some guidelines as to which way to go, not necessarily with only sexual dysfunction, but when you have some suspicion that the man may be hypogonadal uh, because his testosterone is substantially lower than it should be. And it's been dogma, and I still think it's dogma for many years, that as you get older, your testosterone goes down. And that has not changed. But as I said yesterday, when you look at one variable and a patient who presents with multiple factors and you just focus on that one variable, you're never going to get a clear picture of what the real situation is with that patient. So how do the different components of a patient, does he have obesity, what's his age, what's his race, has he had a heart attack, what's his sexual, what's his sexual function, how do those factors all interrelate in the patient's testosterone? So uh, we relied on some data that was available to us through Prostate Cancer Awareness Week. Uh, and what I did was took uh, the data from 2010 and 2011 PCAW, and we had detailed questionnaires, and we collected specimens for PSA, testosterone, cholesterol, and glucose. And this particular study, which we published two years ago in Journal of Men's Health, involved patients we accrued from 44, participants we accrued from 44 centers a mean of uh, 79 participants and a total of 5,000 men from 38 states with a median age of 62. 
Now, we started Prostate Cancer Awareness Week in 1989 that Dr. Crawford and I, Dr. McLeod, Dr. Lynch, and a few others, uh, through a grant from Sharing Plow. So this is what we, what we published first, was that there is an association between race and testosterone levels, and African Americans have substantially higher testosterone levels than other races. The mean testosterone for white men, Caucasian men, was 370 versus 406 for African Americans. Hispanic men were more uh, similar to uh, Caucasian men in what their testosterone levels. That's really interesting data. It sort of lends itself to thinking about why perhaps African Americans have a higher incidence of prostate cancer and maybe, as some report, a higher, uh, higher grade and stage of disease at presentation. But we don't know that for sure because when you look at testosterone levels in African Americans who have prostate cancer, it's really not any different than in Caucasians, but that doesn't tell you about promotion. So you're carrying this higher testosterone for years and perhaps that may have a role in why African Americans are different than Caucasians with regard to their prostate cancer. But anyway, that's what we found, that African Americans have higher T's than other races. And then we looked at your standard, what's the testosterone level based on uh, your age group, and you do see a drop, but it's not so dramatic as what's been reported in the literature, and in fact, the p-value is was 0.02, wasn't as significant as some of the other associations. And this information, since it's more current and may reflect other things going on than information that was gathered maybe 20 years ago on the association of testosterone and, and age, may actually reflect what's going on in our population, and that's got more to do with ob obesity and diabetes, as I will show you. So the point here is you can never not rely on a patient's age. When he comes in and says, oh, you're 80, you, we know you have a low T, versus the guy who comes in at 50 and maybe 30 pounds overweight and doesn't exercise, that guy is, at, as I will show you, a much greater risk of having a low testosterone than that. 80-year-old coming in who's fit and it does exercise. So don't pay attention to age as you're determined to decide whether or not that patient may have a low testosterone. That's the message there. And this has uh, been widely reported. There is a very strong association between body mass index and testosterone. So men in the lowest uh, Groups of BMI have the highest T, so 18 to 24, which is your normal, is, that was 432, but when you're above 35, so that's very obese, the average T level had dropped to 290. So there's over a 100 point difference in testosterone levels based on body mass index. And now you can look at other associations with health, men who came, came in and just complained of erectile function problems. So this is Fairly simple, it's not the shim, do you have ED issues? And the ones that we answered yes had a substantially lower testosterone. The ones that said they had a history of a heart attack had lower T. The ones that said they had heart disease had a lower T. And the ones that had diabetes had a substantially lower T than the ones without diabetes. And when you looked at the shim, not every question on the shim correlated with testosterone levels, but the ones that did on the and the actual the strongest correlation was the question 27 on our questionnaire, which was, do you have confidence to get and keep an erection? And the men that had the highest confidence had testosterone that averaged 390 versus one with the lowest confidence, the testosterone was less than 350 and that p-value was highly significant. So now we have uh, dichotomized the data. Instead of just average testosterones, I made categories. Is your testosterone less than 300, i.e. hypogonadal, or is it greater than 300? And then I do a chi-square analysis and look at groupings. So I put together simple, so I wanted to make this simple. Are you overweight, are you not overweight? And you see that that question, and this is 20 pounds, are you overweight by more than 20 pounds? Or are you not overweight by more than 20 pounds? And you, when you ask the question that way and look at the association with T less than 300, you find that 55% who said they were overweight by more than 20 pounds were hypogonadal. Those that had diabetes was 56%, 58% were 
If you were Af uh, Caucasian, it was 40% versus 32% for African Americans, and so on. Erectile frequency, erectile function, confidence, confidence for penetration, smoking, heart attack, and heart disease were all associated with a low testosterone below 300. So now you take that all together, because that's way too many variables to, to keep in your brain, and you do a logistic regression, which will throw out the non-significance when you have multiple associations, and this is what we came up with. For all participants, what remained significant in the regression analysis was the race, overweight status, the frequency of exercise, and the presence, presence of diabetes. So not everybody has diabetes. Most patients you see don't. So let's throw that out and see what comes in. And you get race, overweight status, and exercise frequency. And if you're diabetic, you throw everything else out, everything else out, and you get overweight. So that's the only thing that was significant in terms of predicting diabetes. And if you're not African American and you're not diabetic, which is again most patients we see, then what stayed in the regression analysis was overweight exercise frequency, and confidence to keep an erection. And if you are African American and not diabetic, because most African Americans are not diabetic, then what stays in is just overweight. So now we can cut it down into very few variables to identify patients with a testosterone less than 300. So that en ended up generating a questionnaire, simple questionnaire, which I termed the MADS questionnaire, the male androgen deficiency syndrome. So that questionnaire you could then give to your patients, and now all you have to ask is three questions. Number one, are you diabetic and 20, more, 20 or more pounds overweight? And if they answer yes, there's a two-thirds likelihood that your testosterone is below 300. Are you African American and 20 pounds or more overweight? If they answer yes, then they have a two-thirds chance of having a T less than 300. And three, if you are a white or Hispanic, answer yes only if all three apply to you. So if a, a Caucasian man comes in, he's not diabetic, and he says, I'm 20 pounds overweight, I exercise less than two times a week, and I have low confidence to keep an erection, two-thirds of those men are hypogonadal. So very simple way. That guy's coming in and saying, I've got sexual function, and if you want to know to measure his testosterone, uh, you ask one of these questions, and two-thirds who answer yes to any of those three questions will be hypogonadal. You should definitely order a testosterone level. So that data was generated out of a retrospective analysis published in the Journal of uh, Men's Health, but a retrospective analysis cannot be accurate if you use it prospectively. So what we did next, and I'll be presenting this data at the AUA this year, is we took the specific questionnaire, not the information that was culled out of the retrospective analysis. So I created a questionnaire and put that questionnaire into PCAW for 2014 and 15 so we could collect enough specimens uh, and answers to see if we could validate the questionnaire. So that's uh, I will be presenting uh, in May in Boston, and here's the questionnaire, it's right here. So this is the MADS questionnaire that's all part of the screening questionnaire, but now they're asking, we're asking the specific questions. What race or ethnicity best describes you? So you have white, Hispanic, African-American. Do you have type 2 diabetes? Do you can you sit yourself overweight? No, yes, less than 20 pounds, more than 20 pounds. How often do you exercise? Less than two times per week? More than two times per week? And how do you rate your confidence you can get and keep an erection? Very low, low versus moderate to high. So those are the questions I just showed you that make up the mass questionnaire. And now we're asking this prospectively and seeing if we get the same results in terms of the two-thirds who answer yes to one of those three questions. Do they still have a low T? And we had 2,400 men participate. And of the 2,400 men who filled out the MADS questionnaire, 1,376 also had serum testosterone levels. Mean age was 61, which was the same as before, and the mean T was 353. And there are the associations with uh, diabetes, overweight status, um, exercise frequency, confidence to keep erection, 
and you can see the p-values were all fairly significant, except for confidence to keep an erection wasn't quite 0.06 in the significant range, but everything else was. And the results show for those patients who had diabetes and were overweight by more than 20 pounds, 67% had a T less than 300, and the odds ratio was almost three, three times the greater likelihood. For African Americans and overweight by 20 pounds or not, it was 62%. So again, two-thirds in the art ratio was 2.22 times greater. And for white Hispanics, not exercising, overweight, and lower erectile function, it was 60% with an odds ratio of two. So basically, we validated the questionnaire prospectively, and I feel now that there's good confidence you can introduce this into your practice to help screen for hypogonadal men. So conclusion, the study validates the use of the MADS questionnaire, which identifies more than 60% of men with a T less than 300. Men with a diabetes and overweight by 20 pounds or more. African American men overweight by 20 pounds or more. And white Hispanic men who don't exercise are overweight by 20 pounds or more and have a low confidence to keep an erection. Have a twofold or greater likelihood of compared to those of having a testosterone, others compared to having a testosterone less than 300. And the instrument can be used to screen for hypogonadal men.